Global News would like to greet you and everyone. Today, we will help you update important international events, while bringing multi-dimensional perspectives and deep reflections on current issues. Topic going on in the world. Right now are the main news that will be in the program. Russia, revenge, with super bomb, unstable battlefield situation for Kiev. President Biden directly warns Israel. Tel Aviv arrested 11 people preparing to assassinate the Minister of National Security. Since the terrorist attack at the Moscow Concert Hall, Russia's attitude has changed drastically. The word, revenge, has been thoroughly implemented, both in words and actions. Therefore, the battlefield situation is probably not good for Kiev. Russia, revenge, with super bomb, unstable battlefield situation for Kiev. At the 19th annual meeting of the Security Council Secretaries of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO, countries in Astana, when talking about the recent terrorist attack in Moscow, the Secretary of the Security Council Russian Security Chief Nikolai Petrushev emphasized that all traces lead to Ukrainian agents. Mr. Petrushev said that according to relevant Russian agencies, the terrorists were all from ISIS, but were related to Western agents. After a detailed investigation, the Russian Foreign Ministry announced on March 31st that the terrorist attack was planned by the Ukrainian government. British news agency Reuters reported that on March 22nd, Russia launched a missile and long-range suicide UAV attack on the Dnipro HES hydroelectric plant in the city of Zaporozhye, southern Ukraine, causing power outages in some areas. Area, and to fix it, it took Ukraine a year and a half. Although Kiev has issued a law banning negotiations with Russia, President Zelensky also announced that Moscow and Kiev can start peace negotiations even without restoring the 1991 Ukrainian border. According to the Russian embassy in Tel Aviv, thousands of Russian citizens living in Israel and holding dual nationality have joined the Israel Defense Forces IDF, to participate in the conflict in Gaza. Thousands of Russians joined Israeli forces in the Gaza conflict. RT Channel, Russia, reported on April 4 that to date, nine Russian citizens have died in the Israel-Hamas conflict. According to the IDF's latest casualty report on April 4, 256 soldiers from this force have died in the conflict in Gaza since October 27, 2023, when the ground campaign was deployed. During the same period, 1,549 soldiers were injured of which 318 were seriously injured. The most recent cases of sacrifice recorded by the IDF were on March 31st. According to the Gaza Health Authority, 33,000 Palestinians have died since the conflict broke out on October 7, 2023. In another development on April 4, TASS quoted Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov as saying that Israeli ambassador to Russia Simona Halperin agreed that it was necessary to respect international humanitarian law in the Israel-Hamas and IDF conflict. Should also have this view. President Biden warns Israel directly. The warning from U.S. President Joe Biden on April 4 emphasized that Israel must take specific steps to protect civilians and relief operations in Gaza. According to Reuters, Mr. Biden's warning marks the first threat related to aid conditions for Israel, a development that could change the dynamics of the nearly six-month-long conflict in the Gaza Strip. The White House cited a phone call between the U.S. President and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. President Biden made clear that Israel must announce and take a series of specific and measurable steps to address civilian harm, humanitarian issues and the safety of aid workers. During the 30-minute call, Mr. Biden also emphasized that U.S. policy on the Gaza issue will be determined based on America's assessment of Israel's immediate actions. At the press conference after the phone call between the two leaders, White House spokesman John Kirby refused to detail specific changes the U.S. would make in its policy towards Israel. The military base in Myanmar's capital was attacked. A military base in the capital Napita, Myanmar was attacked by a drone, UAV, Reuters reported on April 4. The National Unity Government, NUG, an opposition group against Myanmar's military government, said the attack was carried out in the capital Napita, but did not provide detailed information about the type of UAV used or any losses. A spokesman for the NUG branch in Napita and the People's Defense Forces, PDF, said they carried out the attack in two locations under the direction of the NUG security force. 
Located in central Myanmar, the capital Naypyidaw is the most powerful headquarters of the military government, and is where most of the defense equipment is located. Myanmar's military government, which took power after a coup in 2021, has not commented on the information. If this information is confirmed, this is a strong blow to the reputation of the Myanmar army, while this force is facing challenges from rebel groups. Moving on to another noteworthy piece of information. British Prime Minister Sunak is facing pressure to stop selling arms to Israel after seven aid workers, including three British citizens, were killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. The British government faces pressure to stop selling weapons to Israel. British legal and intelligence experts have called on the government to stop implementing the arms transfer deal to Israel. This move came after an airstrike in central Gaza killed many humanitarian aid workers. Specifically, three former Supreme Court judges along with more than 600 members of the British Bar Association sent a letter to Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, calling on the government to stop selling weapons to Israel to prevent conflict in Israel. Gaza. The 17-page petition raised concerns that providing military aid to Israel could expose the UK to serious problems such as violating international humanitarian law. Israel allows aid deliveries across the northern border of the Gaza Strip. On April 5, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office announced that the country would temporarily allow the transfer of aid across the border with the northern Gaza Strip, marking the first time Israel reopened the Erez border gate since the conflict. Outbreak in October 2023. According to the statement, Israel will temporarily allow humanitarian aid to be transferred through the port of Ashdod and the Erez border gate, about 40 kilometers north of Gaza, to prevent a humanitarian crisis. In addition, the administration will also authorize increased Jordanian aid through Karim Shalom, a border crossing in southern Israel. The above announcement was made amid increasing international pressure on Israel after it accepted responsibility for an airstrike that killed seven aid workers. In a phone call earlier in the day between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Joe Biden, the U.S. leader warned that Washington's policy on the Gaza issue would be determined based on specific and measurable steps. Measurable, to avoid civilian casualties, minimize safety, and ensure the safety of civilians and aid workers. Tel Aviv arrested 11 people preparing to assassinate the Minister of National Security. Israel's security agency said on April 4 that it had foiled the plot to assassinate National Security Minister Itamar Ben Gvir, arresting 11 people, including seven Israeli citizens of Palestinian origin. AFP quoted a statement from Shin Bet, Israel's intelligence agency, that Shin Bet destroyed a terrorist group that was preparing to attack in Israel, specifically targeting Minister Itamar Ben Gvir. Shin Bet said the suspects planned to assassinate Mr. Ben Gvir with a rocket launcher. This group also planned to attack military bases, Ben Gurion Airport and the headquarters of government agencies in Jerusalem, according to Shin Bet. The Israeli Internal Security Agency revealed that 10 suspects were indicted at a court in Beersheba, in the south of the country, on April 4. Israeli police and Shin Bet also said they prevented two attacks in East Jerusalem that, supporters of the self-proclaimed Islamic State, is, had planned to carry out. His related attacks are rare in Israel. The recent news also ended our global news program. Thank you for your attention and follow-up. Please continue to accompany us on our journey to discover the world situation, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new information. Goodbye and see you again.